Dr. Christie's office. The Vaseline Program, the only show in radio where the audience writes the script. And tonight, it's Memphis, Tennessee that gets the winner, with the prize money and honors going to June Evans of 1608 Michelle Circle North for her play, The Girl with the Golden Gauntlet, starring Jean Herschel as Dr. Christian, with Rosemary DeCamp in the role of Judy Price. It's a woman's prerogative, as they say. Yes, it's a woman's privilege to constantly search for new glamour, new ways to make the most of her natural gift. Confidentially, right now, are you satisfied with the appearance of your hair? Well, if you're not, here's a simple, easy way to bring out all the true, natural beauty of your hair. Just get Vaseline Hair Tonic. Tonight, give your hair this simple, three-step Vaseline Hair Tonic Glamour Treatment. One, before shampooing, massage the scalp briskly with plenty of Vaseline Hair Tonic. Two, steam your hair and scalp thoroughly by wrapping a piping hot towel around your head for several minutes and then wash your hair. Three, after the shampoo, smooth on a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic as you would a brilliantine. This Vaseline hair tonic glamour treatment, used regularly, helps keep your hair soft and shimmering with natural highlights. Condition your hair now, tonight, with Vaseline hair tonic. Remember, ask for Vaseline hair tonic. Now to meet the girl with the golden gauntlet, an amazing story of two pairs of hands, one grotesquely hideous, the other divinely beautiful, and how these hands gambled for a woman and the man who loved her. As our play opens, Judy Price finds it hard to keep her eyes on her work as Dr. Christian escorts a very lovely lady out of his office. Then I'll expect you tonight, Paul. That's a promise. My plane leaves early tomorrow, you know. Day night, 7.30. <laughs> Unless the stock makes an unexpected call. <laughs> Goodbye now. Goodbye, and thanks for dropping off at River Sand just to visit me. Well. What did you say, Judy? I said, well. Uh, is that a question or a declaration? I mean, uh, do you expect an answer? What on earth is she doing here? Why, it's still a free country, isn't it? Well, I mean, oh, you know darn well what I mean. Every society, editor of every society page where the stuffed olive has called her, quote, the most beautiful woman in America, unquote. Movie queens look at her picture and drink poison. Congressmen see her pass by and swoon in the middle of a filibuster. Why, G.I. Joe's all over the globe were writing poems about her. <laughs> in fact, she even has Judy Price making speeches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's the modern Helen of Troy doing in River's End? Oh, she's traveling across country by plane and dropped by to invite me for dinner at the hotel. Oh, just like that? Well, why not? What's wrong with me? <laughs> oh, isn't she stunning, that gorgeous face and that glorious figure? And all those beautiful hands. Oddly enough, her hands remind me of the strangest, most unbelievable hands I've ever seen. Well, how can hands be strange? They're just the terminal part of the arm used for thousands of purposes, from chopping wood to playing music. Or else to be hidden forever under gloves, to excite great curiosity, and to become the most talked about hands in all Paris. How did Paris get into this? Because it was there I first saw that girl, the one with the strange hands, I mean. Oh. I learned about her from Steve. Steve? Who was Steve? I found Steve in France when I went over one summer for a special research job. You see, this was before the war, when yesterday was young and Paris was Paris. Oh, yes. Steve's mother and mine had been intimate girlhood friends. She had married a very wealthy man, and now she had a fanatical idea that Steve, her only son, who didn't want a career at all, ought to be a great, great surgeon. She asked me to keep an eye on him while I was over there. Late one night, when I was deep in my books, he came bursting into the quarters from here. Hi, Pavlo. Oh, quiet, you boiler factory. Where have you been? In paradise. Oh, paradise. Drunk again. Night after night. Oh, Pavlo, she's wonderful. The face of Venus, the eyes of Cleopatra, the smile of Mona Lisa, the form of Salome. Hey, hey, put those books out of my sight. Don't you know books frighten me? Fine surgeon you would make. Surgeon, he says. What does a guy who's going to inherit 20 million bucks want to be a surgeon for? I'll bite. Why? No, my mom's got a daffy idea in the bonnet that I ought to save humanity or something. Nuts. 
Anyway, about this girl, she... Pablo, for the love of cabbage, will you close that book? Listen, Steve, I haven't got 20 million bucks, and I do want to be a decent surgeon. But I want to tell you about Ariella. Ah, now you've done it, Romeo. Here comes trouble. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's only you, Charlie. Uh, you fellows woke me up. Whenever I hear noise coming out of this hole at 2 o'clock in the morning, it means one of two things. Either Steve has fallen out of love with his old girl, Kerplunk, or he's fallen into love with a new girl, Kerplunk. What is it now? A ne'er did Grecian chisel trace, oh. a nymph, a naiad, or a grace, a finer form, a lovelier face. Many tools like that, it's a new one. Come on, let's hold this alcohol sponge up at the bed, Charlie. Uh, who, as if I won't get my tongue cut out for asking, is this new wench? Ariella. Oh, fabulous queen of the Sultan's harem. Ariella. Now go cut your tongue out. Say, not the singer at the same door. Queen of the Sultan's harem. Now listen, boy, that girl has half the men in Paris dancing on their heads. Princes and counts and Russian dukes spend half their nights polishing their dueling swords on account of her. And drinking themselves to death the rest of the night. You know her? Know her? Why, she's dynamite. Well, she's wildfire. She's a, a whirlwind in a mountain pass. Stevie, boy, look out. Oh, cut out the rubbish, Charlie. Boy, you'd better keep this kid away from her. I don't get it. Don't you? Listen. She's the girl with the golden gauntlet. And I want to marry her. Well, Judy, I was worried. At that time, I was like a big brother to Steve. Was he really going to become a doctor? Steve? Why, he couldn't cure a ham. <laughs> then young million bucks was only fooling his mommy, huh? While building himself up into a first-class bump. He was sending this girl a dozen orchids every night, borrowing large sums of money and giving her expensive jewels. Finally, he got a crazy notion that Charlie and I ought to speak. Listen, you dope, that place is jammed to the teeth. I paid the headshot 50 bucks to reserve us a table. Oh, but I've got a heavy date in the lab tomorrow morning. You and me both, Paul. But I want you to see why I'm insane about her. Will you come to the lab tomorrow? Yes, if you come with me tonight. Oh, well, an, an eye for an eye. But she's a lovely eyeful, Paul. I'm in the mood for love. Now. What do you say? Well, isn't she pretty? Pretty. Listen, Pablo, she's fantastic. And look at all the women crying and the men moping. Oh, what do you expect from a sentimental song? No, no, it's Ariella. Those women are crying their eyes out because those men are moping. And those men are moping because they're married to those women. Hmm. Notice her long gloves, Paul? Yeah, they look like gold. A real gold mesh. And studded with real diamonds. She's never seen without them. Why? Nobody knows, Paul. Nobody knows. Hey, cut it, cut it. People are shushing us. Doctor, you've been moody all day. I can't help thinking about that girl, Charlie. So? Junior keeps raving that he intends to marry her. I think he's wrapped in plain foolishness. But I want to know who she is. Well, I got this from an old man I met in a sidewalk cafe. He knew her when she first arrived a couple of years ago, down on the left bank. She came from the States. Well, I thought she was French. Oh, no. She's from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Well, just an American product with a Parisian label. She came here to paint. <laughs> Imagine that. Even then she wore them. Wore what? Long black gloves, all the time. She lived in a dirty little room, starved a good deal, had no friends of any kind, and painted. With gloves on? With gloves on. Worked very hard, but sold nothing. Then how did she live? She walked into a little dump one night, desperately broke, and begged them to let her sing for a meal. I see. That's how she started. Huh? Uh, she was sensational. I can imagine that. Now she's the rage of Paris. Her name is linked with hundreds of famous men. Oh, that could be just scandal sheep gossip? Yeah, it could be, Paul. But uh, where there's smoke, there's probably a cigarette. I think I'll go ahead and have a talk with Steve. Oh, 
use your head, Steve. Stop being a fool. I won't have you insulting the girl I love. She's not the kind of girl you're supposed to love, the most notorious woman in Paris. I said stop insulting her. Steve, I promised your mother Since that Since when I... are you my keeper? I see. You think I've been kidding. Well, get this straight. I'm going to marry Ayala. You and my mother and all my mother's chromium-plated lawyers can't stop me. The only thing in the world that bothers me is... Well, her hands. You heard the usual rumors? Fantastic rot, I guess. Well, I've heard them, too. Could it be, Paul? Could she have claws like... Like the claws of an ape? Harry and Black? Listen, Steve. Or what the others say, that the talons of an eagle with wrinkled flesh and long, sharp nails? And the paws of a beast? Are just bones charred and fleshless, burnt by fire? What's under those gloves, Paul? Now, Steve, hold on. Then there's an actress, jealous of Ariella, who swore to a newspaper reporter that... that Ariella's hands are without fingers. Scaled with the silver scales of a fish. Instead of hands, she has fins. Stop it, Steve. Stop it. I don't care what her hands are like. The golden gorgeous may be only a, a publicity gag. I'm thinking about her reputation. And what's wrong with her reputation? From what I hear, she hasn't any. Pablo, if anybody else said that, I'd kill him. <laughs> And then, Judy, I played my last card. I called on the girl with the golden gauntlets myself. <laughs> so you are Stephen's friend, whom he calls Pablo. Yes, I'm his friend. And uh, may I call you Pablo, too? If uh, that would please you, mademoiselle. Any friend of Stephen's may call me Ariella. Thank you, Ariella. So, you came to save him from that awful woman, that she-devil. Yes. He's really just a boy, a gallant, foolish, headstrong boy. That's why I like him, Pablo. He fancies he loves you. A beautiful compliment. But uh, many men have loved me. And do you love him, Ariella? What do you mean by love? You ought to know. You are a woman of the world. Yes, I'm a woman of the world. But I'm not the world's woman. Uh, now, I didn't mean that. I'll tell you this. Many men have loved me, yes. But I have never given my love to any man. Do you understand that? He doesn't answer my question about Steve. Only fools and philosophers ask questions. Call me a fool, then. Because if you really love Steve, and if he loves you, I'll step out of the picture. You're no fool, Pablo. You're very wise. I still demand to know, do you love him? Love him? How can I? How dare I? How dare I love any man? Look at these gloves. These evil, hideous gloves, which I must wear all the time. As long as I shall live. Oh, look what life has done to me. And suddenly I knew, Judy, that she was hopelessly and desperately in love with Steve. That she was clean and fine. I'd been as wrong about her as all the chief scandal mongers of Paris. And still, for some mysterious reason, she considered herself a forbidden woman. The next day, I told Steve about my visit. So you like her? Oh, Pablo, that's swell. I'm sorry for all I've said. Say, I'll bet you came under that spell. But you can still become a good doctor, Steve. No, uh, not me. Who wants to save humanity? All I want out of life is plenty of fun. With all your money and talent, that's a pity. And say, I've got a scheme. I'll prove her hands are like anybody's hands, like yours and mine. I'll make her remove her gloves. What sort of scheme? You've got to come with me tonight when I take her home. After her last performance. Ariella, I, I brought this lunkhead along. Is it okay? Why, Pablo, how lovely. <laughs> this lunkhead gets all the pleasure. <laughs> Are we good friends now? I certainly hope so. Uh, then I'm happy. Oh, no, don't get too happy. Wait here till I, I trap a cab, huh? I, I'll tell you a secret while he's gone. Yes? Tonight it's goodbye. No. Yes, Paul. But why? Why so suddenly? Oh, it's better this way. But where are you going? Much too far for Steve to find me. Ah, then you're running away. You're afraid of being near him. Is that it? 
It's the last decent thing in my life that I'll ever do. Believe me, Paul, it's better this way. But then Judy Steve came back, and soon we were sitting in the cab. Steve beside her, and I half facing them. She was rather melancholy and very beautiful, with her hands folded in her lap, wearing the golden gauntlets up to her elbows, with golden chains around her wrists, as if, if to prevent the gloves from being torn off by surprise. Her throat was framed by a lovely string of pearls, and I remarked about them. Oh, they must be worth the king's ransom. But far more precious to me. They belong to my mother, and before her to her mother, and even her mother's mother. I see. Very old and very dear. I told Stephen once they're the dearest thing I own. Right. Cigarette, are you on? Oh, yes, thank you. Here you are, Pablo. Well, just this one. Say, this uh, slot next to the door here has matches. Oh, uh, no, no. Let me let me try out my new lighter. It's one of those knickknacks the size of a postage stamp. Oh, but has it got a light? I think it's got that, too. Uh, wait, here it is. Uh, I almost had it. There. Now. Thank you. You see, it really works. And now yours, Pablo, is... Oh, 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 please be careful, my pearls. Oh, your sleeve button, it, it's caught in the string, and you torn it. I... Oh, my lovely pearls. It's all over the cab. Oh, don't worry, we'll find oh, it. Oh, quick, please. You bet, here we go. We dropped to our knees, Judy. I yanked off my gloves quickly. So did Steve, hardly aware of what we did. And then, Ariella. She took off her gloves? Her mind that moment thought only of the pearls, nothing else. I saw her unclasp one of the chains. I stood still on my knees, frozen with terrified anticipation. And so did Steve, his eyes glaring at her. And as if unaware of what she was doing, Ariella drew her right hand out of the golden gauntlet. Yes, and then? In a flash of horror, she realized what she has done. She thrust her hand back, but I had seen it. Steve had seen it, and she knew we'd seen it. It was a trick. What? A long, cheap, contemptible trick. But I don't understand, Steve. Well, how could you believe that I... That... Oh, was this your foul and devilish scheme? <laughs> oh, I swear before heaven, Ariella, I... Oh, I wish I'd died before I looked. <laughs> And it cold-bloodedly, Doctor, to use his lighter on her cigarette and to catch the button of his sleeve in her pearls. Hmm? And left the rest of the rule book of human nature. And then you took her home? Yes, Judy. She walked alone to a door with her head bent very low. Oh, it was awful. And what about Steve? I couldn't look at him. He didn't speak a word. Only back in our quarters, I said. Well, Master Million Bucks, you had a big thrill of your life tonight. You broke a girl's heart into a million pieces and wept her soul into shreds. I know, Paul, I know. Is that all you can say? Only this. Oh, I wish I were dead. He went away that night, Judy. Disappeared completely. So did Ariella. She was never seen again in Paris. I see. Oh, can't you tell me about her hands? They were the most unbelievable hands I'd ever seen on such a beautiful girl. All of her hands seemed to be discolored, roughened, scaly, and most of the fingers were wet, like the feet of a duck. Oh. What became of Steve? If a man can be reborn, Steve was reborn. The old spirit left his body and a new spirit entered. He began to study medicine as so the whole medical future of the world depended on him alone. And did he ever become successful? Successful? Well, haven't you heard of Dr. Stephen Barclay Talbot? Talbot? The greatest plastic genius of them all? One and the same. He's given hundreds, thousands of horribly maimed and disfigured soldiers brand new faces, new bodies, new lives. So he was Steve. And Ariella, what happened to her? Didn't you recognize her? Recognize her? The lovely lady you were raving about in my office not an hour ago. What? Dr. Talbot's wife? 
a gorgeous creature with a beautiful hand. Is she a real? Yes, Judy. And it was to give her those hands that Steve Talbot became one of the greatest surgeons of our time. And the curtain descends on another Dr. Christian prize play with our star, Jean Hirschold, waiting to greet you. But first, a word from Judy Price. They may be out of uniform, but for our doctors, the fight against injuries and disease goes on. It's heartening to know that now they'll have new weapons, new treatments and therapies perfected during the war. A new burn treatment, for example, that converted so many thousands of serious battle burn cases into remarkable recovery. This effective new treatment includes the surface application of petroleum jelly. The chances are you have the world's leading brand, Vaseline petroleum jelly, in the house now. So when anyone suffers a minor household burn, go straight for the tested, reliable aid, your jar of Vaseline petroleum jelly. Spread it on fine mesh gauze and place over the burn. Bandage firmly, but not tightly. If the burn is deep or covers a wide area, always call the doctor. For minor burns, keep Vaseline petroleum jelly handy. There are many petroleum jellies on the market, but only one bears the trademark Vaseline. That trademark, owned by the Chief Burl Manufacturing Company, is your guarantee of absolute purity. And now here is Jean Herschel. Thank you very much. The uh, author of tonight's ingenious story is June Evans of Memphis, Tennessee. I'm just the average kitchen engineer, she writes. My day begins with the click of the milk bottles and ends when the young one has hollered, Good night, Mommy. <laughs> Nevertheless, this ambitious young writer has been a winner in two Dr. Christian competitions, and we hope she'll enter again this year. The annual Dr. Christian Award pays $2,000 for the best script submitted suitable for the Dr. Christian program, and from $150 to $350 for other scripts selected for presentation on the program. The current competition is the fifth one. It closes April 7th, 1946. Let me emphasize again that everyone is welcome to try for this award, whether professional or amateur. To date, 187 winners have had their place chosen for this program. If you wish to enter and send for the folder of rules to the Dr. Christian Award, 17 State Street, New York, 4, New York. Next week we plan to present an exciting melodrama called Forbidden Hill by Robert Jackman of Hollywood, California. We invite you all to join us again next Wednesday evening to hear the Vaseline program, same time and same station. And until then I'll say good night. Here's a friendly tip. If cold weather brings tender, chapped lips, for quick relief, quick healing, get Vaseline Lip Ice. With Vaseline Lip Ice, chapped lips begin to heal almost instantly. Only 10 and 25 cents at druggists everywhere. Vaseline Lip Ice. Remember, if you want to try for the Dr. Christian Award, send for the folder of rules to Dr. Christian Award, 17 State Street, New York 4, New York, right tonight. Art Gilmore speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.